Hi, this is Samuel with The Physics Focus and the third video about the equations of constant acceleration. This time we're looking at how to use these equations in a 2D situation. So, here we have the five equations, quick reminder, down there on the left. And here is the situation that we are going to work through. So, I'm sitting at the top of a cliff. I decide to throw my lunch over the side of the cliff and the question is if I throw them with an initial speed of 8 meters per second 30 degrees above the horizontal how far out do they go before they come down in the sea? So what do we do with this? Well as always when you're starting off a question or a problem like this if you're not sure what you're doing Draw a diagram. So here we go. Here is the cliff. There's the sea. I am standing at the top here. We know That distance is 20 meters. That's this 20 meters here. And I'm going to throw this object off. There, this is 8 meters per second, 30 degrees. Thirty degrees above the horizontal. Right. First thing you need to do with this is change this velocity, this initial velocity, into a vertical and a horizontal component. So we're going to do that now, straight away. Change your colour to show that we are dealing with components now. So we want to change that into horizontal and vertical. So, what does that come to? Well, this is a simple case of taking components of a vector. So the horizontal component is 8 times cosine 30. That comes out as... Six point nine meters per second, and the vertical one is eight times sine thirty, so that is four meters per second. Now this object is going to follow a path like this. It's actually a parabola, the shape of that curve, which means it's a y equals x squared kind of a shape, until it lands in the sea, just there, splash. Right, next. So we've drawn the diagram, put on it all of the information that we've been given, we want to find that distance there. Now just like with one-dimensional Suvat situations, 
All we do now is make a list of all of the information that we know. Except that now that we're dealing with two dimensions, we have to split this into horizontal and vertical. So horizontal, S U V A T, and vertically, S U V A and T. Right, horizontally, from the beginning, so from here to the end, where it lands in the water. What is the horizontal distance? That's the green distance that we don't know. So I'm just going to call that x. That's what we're trying to work out. u, initial velocity, that's the 6.9 meters per second. v, come back to that in a moment. a, the acceleration horizontally. Now while this object is moving through the air, the only force acting on it is the force due to gravity. And that force, of course, acts vertically downwards. That causes a vertical acceleration, but no horizontal acceleration. So acceleration horizontally is zero. This, of course, gives us a final velocity that hasn't changed. There is no acceleration or deceleration horizontally, so there's no change in horizontal velocity either. T, we also don't know, so let's just call that T. Time taken, beginning to end, and right, vertically. S, displacement. Right, now this is where it gets a little bit tricky. You have to be careful how you're thinking about this. With the horizontal move, motion, I have decided to define the right direction, towards the right, as positive. Vertically, I am going to say that upwards is positive. It doesn't matter, you can do it either way around, but you have to pick a direction and then make sure that all of your quantities fit in with that. So, displacement from beginning to end, vertically, is going down 20 meters. So the displacement here we have to put in as minus 20. U is going upwards at 4 meters per second. So that's positive. V is the final vertical velocity just as it arrives at the end here. We don't know that. That, by the way, is not zero. It's not the velocity after it's landed, it's the velocity just before it lands. So V, we don't know. And actually we're not even really interested in finding out either at the moment. A, the acceleration, that's the acceleration due to gravity. That's 9.8 meters per second squared. But that's downwards, so we have to put that in as minus. Time, Take it from the beginning to the end. Now this is the one quantity that is the same across the two, horizontal and vertical. So that we can put in as t. Same t as on the left. We want to find that x there. Trouble is we can't work that out just from the horizontal information. So, what we need to do is look at the vertical information here. We know s, u and a. We want to find t because we could feed that back in and onto the left. We don't want to find v. Don't know, don't care. So look for the equation that doesn't have a v in. Here we go. s equals ut plus a half at squared. So. ut plus... Then we feed in the numbers that we know. S is minus 20 equals 
4, u is 4, 4t, minus, because a is negative, half a is 4.9, t squared. Rearrange this. There we go, we have a quadratic equation. <clears throat> so we can solve this to give t, which, using the quadratic formula, is probably the easiest at this stage. That's negative b plus or minus square root of 4ac, uh, sorry, b squared minus 4ac, which is 16 plus, yep, 408, all over 2a, which is 9.8, gives us. About two and a half or minus 1.65. Now obviously a negative time doesn't make sense in this particular case, so it's 2.5, 2.47 that we go with. So that value there gets put back in there. Now, we now know the speed, horizontal speed, 6.9 meters per second. We know how long it's traveling. There is no acceleration. So working out how far it's gone simply becomes a case of using speed is distance over time. Or distance traveled now horizontally is speed times time. Horizontal velocity, 6.9 times the time. You could use the relevant Suvat equation if you really want to. One that doesn't have an A in it. This one here. You'll find u plus v divided by 2, they're both the same, so the average value still comes out to 6.9. So it comes to be the same equation. And that gives 17 meters. So, <clears throat> quick review. Suvat in two dimensions is actually quite simple to do. You just need to make sure you keep separate the horizontal and vertical components of what's going on. Write out Suvat for the horizontal motion, making sure you pick a direction to be positive and stick to it. 
Suva for the vertical motion, again making sure you pick a positive direction and put everything that's going the other way in as a negative value. And then just look at which gaps do you have and which of them can you fill in using any of the five equations. And the only thing that matches up between the two is the time. So once you've worked out time on one, you can transfer it to the other, but none of the other quantities. Hope that proves useful. Thank you. Bye for now.